I'm checked. I'm getting my. You recording? Yeah, I'm recording. I'm getting my fucking new car. Who gives a fuck about? It? Let me explain something to you before we even go into this. First of all, welcome to the Mad Lab MMA, brought to you by the Mayo Media Network, where we break down the main event. Before we do any of this shit, and we talk about the bludgeon that we took with fucking McGregor and this new fight, let me explain something to you. If you have a fucking friend that that this kid right here is, he's like my brother. He's got the worst, the absolute fucking worst haggling fucking skills I've ever seen in my life. You know why? I mean, it's disgusting. It's worse than my fucking sister. I have a younger sister. If I brought my sister to a dealership, she would be able to fucking haggle, haggle a price. You know why? I'll tell you why. He couldn't haggle a price. I'll tell you why. Because I'm an amazing fucking salesman, and great salesmen get sold. That's just what happens. Get under fucking phones right now. I'll, I'll sell you on anything, dude. You can't sell like fucking me. <laughs> you buy this fucking car, listen, or I'll break listen, your fucking head. <laughs> It's not in the table, dude. I can't help it. So, we're, listen, we're driving to the gym on, on our lunch break, right? And uh, and he's on the phone with this guy, Greg Suzuki. <laughs> <laughs> that was the car name. deal. I'm Greg getting a brand new, new fucking car. Right, so he's Land getting Road. a new car, right? And we're, we're driving to the fucking dealership. <laughs> we're driving to the dealership. And this guy is basically telling him, telling him what he's going to pay and how he's going to pay it. And he's just okaying him to death. And I keep hitting the fucking mute button. I'm like, bro, what are you fucking high? I like, want tell the fucking guy. car. Yeah, but you get... It's the fucking Stormtrooper edition. Yo, comment below <laughs> about how to haggle. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, hit the bell. <laughs> Don't listen to this fucking guy. What do you see my fucking truck? I'll show pictures of it next week on the video, yeah, okay? Nice. And you'll know. All so right. we're here for the main event breakdown for Overeem Volkov. Obviously, last week, you can't hide from it. We won't hide from it. Uh, we picked McGregor. We were completely wrong. Uh, I thought that if Poirier was going to win the fight... I figured it would, he would drag him into the long game uh, and start piecing him up from there. Obviously now, there's a shitload of blueprints out on McGregor, um, you know, as far as checking kicks, as far as the grappling, as far as the conditioning that obviously we haven't seen much of it because, you know, it didn't go that long. But I just feel like after watching him, he he looked like he aged right before my eyes. Dude, fucking Poirier is the fucking man. He looks great. Now listen, I'm not taking anything away from Poirier. I Poirier. love his attitude. I like how he carries himself. He's not a fucking dick. You know what I mean? No, I just I'm, like him. I'm a fan of him. He's known for his, he's known for his charity work. No, he's a, I like he's, his fucking style. He's a great guy, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about McGregor just was not doing McGregor things. He wasn't on the balls of his feet. He wasn't bouncing in and out of the pocket. He usually gets in the pocket. He has that overreach left hand that he's, he kind of lines you up. He wasn't doing any of that. He was kind of, he, it's almost like he got so baited in when he was fighting, when he trained for the Mayweather fight that he became a boxer. He became a boxer. He forgot about the- Inactivity. I, listen, I'm a firm believer in Cage Russ and, and, and I know Dominic Cruz isn't and there's a lot of people out there that aren't, but let me tell you something guys, if you guys have trained before, Cage rust and ring rust is real. There's a big difference between maxing out people in the gym and tossing people in the gym to live time. Look at fucking, what's the guy, the Argentinian guy a couple weeks ago that you were fucking huge on, didn't fight in three years, he had the bacteria infection? Pa, uh, Ponza, Ponza Nibio. Look at Ponza Nibio, yeah. dude. Yeah, that was huge, huge, huge cage rust. Right, he didn't yeah. fight for the last three years. Yeah. Big, big, heavy yeah. favorite. Mm -hmm. He got his fucking, yeah. he got waxed. Yeah. You know, I believe in the guy. How could you not be? You're not active. A lot of people don't. A lot of people don't, and I think it's fucking crazy, especially for a guy like Dominic Cruz, who's so well versed and so polished, not to believe in cage and ring rust. It's just it blows me away. Well, you know what? We take it under fucking chin and we move on. Yeah. We got eight straight weeks of fights coming up, starting with this one right here. I think this was like the first main event. We out of like ten main events, I think we only got two wrong. We got two wrong. This one, and we got the the Weidman one wrong. Weidman. Yes, Weidman. Fucking. Um, who did he? Uh, who did he fight? Well, it wasn't Weidman. Wasn't it Weidman? Here. It was we picked against Weidman. Get the fuck out of here. All right, so we got Overeem <laughs> and Volkov. <laughs> fucking dick. All right, so... No, Magni. It was the Magni. Yeah, it was the Magni. The Magni Kiesa fight. Magni, fucking fight. Weidman. Weidman I, hasn't fucking fought since you were in diapers. I fucking hate Weidman. <laughs> He's fighting against him, by the way. I can't I fucking stand it. So... Overeem Volkov, baby. This is a fight I always say... Heavyweight fights, you got to be very careful with. You, you, it's not, you know, the lightweight fights. There's a lot of times there's not, you know, it's the chins in the wrong spot. You, you know, you're. It, it's very volatile. The heavyweights, you could be a complete street fighter and just fight a guy who's got 20 years of experience, black belt, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, judo. But if you catch him at the right time, any heavyweight can put any heavyweight out at any time. So it, it, it's a very dangerous toy to play with when you're trying to predict 
heavyweight fights. But when you got a fight like this where these guys are a little bit more, po a lot more polished, I mean, Overeem's a first ballot Hall of Famer. A guy like Volkov is kind of coming into his prime, you know, still in his prime. I think he's coming into his prime. Um, very polished strikers, both decent grapplers, uh, and resumes out of the ass. It, it's a little bit more of a chess match, but it's still the heavyweights. I think Overeem, I love Overeem. I've always been a big fan of Overeem. He won four of his last five. The one he lost was the lip split knockout by uh, which Rose, he which won. he jumped right back up. Meldrick so, Taylor part two. Mel, yeah, here we go with the fucking Meldrick Taylor. Every time there's a bad stoppage, it's a Meldrick fucking Taylor moment, okay? Regardless, it was a bad stoppage. I don't know if it was a bad stoppage. No, it was, bro. It was a terrible fucking stoppage. It just looked terrible. If you're the ref. And you I don't see stop the, that fight. You see his lip dangling. I don't stop that fight. So, could, listen, they were, listen, I don't care if they tell you to listen to it or not listen to it. If you hear the fucking clack, you kind of know how much time is left in a round. You look, you see. You, when there's three seconds, two seconds left in a fight and he pops back up, you got to give him the opportunity to, 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 to win the he fight. He did jump right back he up. He jumped right I back get up. It. I he get it. He was out. He was out on his feet. He, he was out. He, he if there was 10 seconds left in that fight, he'd be done. He bounced right but back But he bounced up. right back. He can't just stop the fight. He, they robbed him of a victory, dude. Okay. So. Because he was, listen, technically he's, he's, he's you know, he won four of his last five. Four of he his last five. five of his last five. So that, and that being my point that he, even him being at this age, I feel like he's gotten a lot smarter and, and he's adjusted by, by him being, recognized that he's a little slower than he used to be, doesn't have what he used to have, but he's adjusted and, and evolved his fighting game a little bit and is a little more slick now, all right? He has, he's doing the trips more and, you know, a lot of, even more knees than he used to. He's so. got good inside trips now. He's got good inside trips now. So um, I think he's great, but I do think that Volkov is younger, faster, more durable, could go into deep waters, no fucking problem. And uh, I'm with you on this one. We discussed this all week long. Um, we watched a lot of film together on this. I, I think that Volkov is going to win this fight. Yeah, me too. I just, uh, you know, when I was watching film on this, like you tend to go back, right? And you're looking at a guy in Overeem who, you know, this is one of the, the only guy to have a strap in uh, three companies. You know, Dream, K1, Strike Force. Uh, it's a guy who, who he's just credentialed everywhere. And you tend to go back and watch his old fights. I was watching his fight with, with Brock Lesnar, and I know Brock Lesnar personally, and I know how big he is, and to see Overeem kind of, not dwarf him, but just make him look soft and he was not as great. He was huge. Huge. You gotta take yourself out of that, and you gotta take yourself out of his record, and you gotta take yourself out of the 25 KOs and the 17 submissions that he had in the past. He's not that guy anymore. He's a more calculated fighter. He doesn't have that volume, doesn't spit that fire anymore, and he knows that, but that's what makes him so tricky and dangerous now, because you don't know what you're gonna get from him now from fight to fight. But when you become the, 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 the aggressor as far as now he's looking for these inside trips and he's looking to you know, press his weight on you and take you down and, and throw that heavy ground and pound, that, that takes energy. And when, you're, when you have the, his, the, the muscular size as him that needs more oxygen and you're 40 years old, you're getting more tired. Volkov has been taken down 14 times by Blades. He's not that hard to take down. 14 times? 14 times one fight. By Blades. But if you're taking down 14 times, what does that tell you? You're getting up. Yep. So he's getting up, he's getting up, he's getting up. That's just gonna tax on Reem. And I just think as the fight goes on, Volkov, his pace doesn't go up. Heavyweight's pace goes down. So basically what happens is he looks like he's getting better. He's gonna start laying a bead on Reem. He's gonna start hitting him at range. Reem may take some fucking, you know, desperation shots to, to try to take him down. He'll be able to shuck him away with some good front kicks. He's got great knees. They both got great knees down the middle. Um, I just think it's going to be, he's going to really drag him into the long game. I think Reem has a window. Um, and I, I just think this, the fourth and fifth round, if it's a close fight going into the fourth and fifth, I just think Volkov can kind of run away and outpouring him. He's not a guy who's going to knock you out with one shot, shot. He does it punches and bunches. He does it with volume. And that volume, you'll just start seeing Reem wearing it and wearing it. Where Reem can do it with one shot. You know, Volkov won eight of his last 10 fights, one of those losses being to Derek Lewis, that last second knockout. So, and he was killing. Well, that was his fault, though. I know that was his fault, yeah. but, you know, winning on all those horror cards, but it wasn't even fucking yeah. close. So he legitimately could have won nine of his last 10 fights. Yeah. And very but, underrated, dude. Very underrated. And, and these aren't your typical heavyweights. This isn't fucking Felipe Tafa. You know what I mean? This, these are two smart guys. They yeah. both have high cage IQ. So I think it's a dangerous fight. So when it comes from a betting perspective, are you betting this fight? No, I don't think this fight deserves to be bet. I think there's value on Reem just for be the mere fact because he's a this guy's so credentialed. He's he's an underdog, but I'm not picking him, so I'm not going near it. 
Um, I, I, it's heavyweights. You're, you're, you're playing with fire if you bet heavyweights. How about the over? The over is something I looked at, just for the mere fact that I think that it's going to be a little bit more calculated in the beginning. I think Green wants to – he knows it's a five-round fight. He wants to slow the pace down. I think Volkov, know, Volkov knows that he's got so many tricks in the bag being such a savvy vet that he's not going to be you know, pressing the action so quick. So, And he's durable. I think it can go two and a half. I think if you're going – if you need juice on the, on the fight, I think that's something to look at. I think it's like minus 120 right now to go over. So if you need juice on the fight and you want it, then I could see you know that being a play. But as far as betting the fight straight up or tying it into a parlay or something like that, personally, me, I wouldn't do it. I like the over too. From a DraftKings perspective, um, dangerous fight. You got to play it both ways. Yeah, a hundred percent. You got to play it both ways. Um, usually, I tell my people at the heavyweights. You always want a piece. And both ways, not saying stack the fight. Yeah, not saying stack the fight. Not a stack the fight. I'm saying, but you got to play a little bit of Volkov, a little bit of Overeem, a um, little uh, more heavy on Volkov. A little bit more heavy on Volkov, and I think that there's room to fade the, this fight in a couple lineups as well. I, and I normally don't say that because heavyweights usually have that super high upside for a finish, but I could see this fight possibly going to decision. I, I think that Reem has a tendency now of making things boring and sluggish and Volkov might be fine with that, staying on the outside and laying a beat on him. And just, you know, I know it's a smaller cage, but these, it's not like these guys are super explosive anymore. So if you're setting 10 lineups at DraftKings, how many lines would you have uh, Volkov in? How many Reem? How many would you fade? I'd say, you know, I'd say I wouldn't hate you if you fade it in three. You know, if you wanted to have seven lineups, maybe four with Volkov, three with Reem, you know, and three with nothing, or you want to go eight and two with three, that's fine. But... I think there is a spot in GPP and, and, and that you can kind of skirt this fight and hope that it's a fucking boring slobber knocker, which it possibly can go decision. I mean, it's got high upside to, to any heavyweight fight has the upside to finish, but I could see this fight going to the decision. And there you have it, Volkov, the official pick. Uh, thank you for tuning in. We'll see you each and every week for the main event breakdown right here on the Mayo Media Network. Come visit us at madlabmma.com. Get on our email list. We send out weekly tips, betting tips, DFS tips. We have an awesome merch store. We got an awesome community. Come try us out. And uh, we'll see you next week. <laughs>